Welcome back to another episode of Seven Days to Die. It is day five, and today we're going to continue gathering up those resources for that base, and hopefully we can get a horde base set up. I need to find a location to do that, and I need to find all the necessary cobblestone and wood. I'm going to want about 2,000 cobblestone and 2,000 wood for a good base. In my experience, I'll also need some iron to get some trapdoors set up. We're going to gather up a bunch more cobblestone from these houses nearby, and... We're going to also keep an eye out for any more trees and obviously easy sources of wood. I do see that crawler there. But yeah, for today it's going to be mostly grind. So I'm going to keep the commentary to a minimum and just show the highlights, I think. Knock, knock. Oh yeah, this place has a decent amount of cobblestone. Okay, that's this place cleared out. Let's gather up some of this cobblestone here. All right, that is the house here done, and we're getting there on the cobblestone. We're definitely going to need a lot more wood, though, but a couple more houses like that, and we should have more than enough cobblestone to make a basic horde base. Let's check out this greenhouse here. Oh, nice. I always love nerdy glasses. 10% extra XP will also be very welcome because I'm kind of a low level I think. I don't know I don't like being level 10 on day 5 I feel like that's pretty low for some reason but I've got a decent amount of kills. Oh yeah this place is the jackpot for cobblestone although I think this is more for level design but I'm still gonna steal it anyway. And we have a skill point already I'm gonna save that I think I'm gonna go for uh, as useful as, say, Mother Loader Minor 69er would be right now, I'm going to exercise some self-control and go towards having 7 strength. But I realise I can actually get one more for one more point there. So with two more levels, we'll be at level 7 strength, thanks to our cigar. And we'll be able to unlock the next level of Pummel Pete and max out Sexual Tyrannosaurus, which is great for clubs. And I didn't bring any lockpicks, of course not. By the way, if you're enjoying the series, guys, let me know by pressing that like button. And of course, if you're new here, do consider hitting that subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this. If this is your first video in the series, you'll find episode 1 linked in the comments. And if episode 4 is out, you will also find that link there as well. Well, oh, Art of Mining. It's a small chance to mine rare gems for more, so diamonds and stuff. Nice. Ah, this place is filled with cement. It's not exactly what I need right now, but it might be something I need later in the game. In fact, it's definitely going to be something I'll need later in the game. That is a satisfactory amount of cement, it has to be said. I can't complain, even though I really did want some more cobblestone. Oh, that is a weird looking duster. Let me get out of here and I'll show you guys what this place looks like. Because I imagine some of you are going to want to take advantage of that rooftop cement there. Alright, so this is what the house looks like. It's got a... What would you call that? Shingle wall? I think that's supposed to be a roof tile that is being used as a wall tile. It's got a green bottom floor and it has a big red chimney. It's a very, very square house and at the back, a little jump puzzle with stone over there which I've left intact so I could get into the building. 
We're getting close on the resources we need. We need a few hundred more cobblestone and we need like another thousand wood, but that's definitely achievable. Yo, wrecked. Okay, he doesn't no have anything good for me. Uh, do you got any good jobs though? Not really. I'll take that just in case. I am going to queue up a fire axe here just so I can gather more wood later in the day. Because I always tend to run out of wood in the initial horde base building because I always insist on doing it out of wood for some reason. And I could probably skip to rebar or flagstone, but you know what? I like the XP. Let's go and check out some of the other places. It looks like where Trader Rect is sending me is kind of out of town and I don't want to go out there just yet. So I'll stay in here for now. Another skill point. I think that's going to be one I'm going to save though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll save that for level 7 strength instead of spending that on anything right now. Let's get a bit more cobblestone here. What's happening to my arms? Do I even want to ask what this is about? Problem solved. Are you okay up there, guy? The game just had a moment. I don't know what any of that was. Looks like we have a wandering horde coming in over here. Good thing it's daytime and they don't move very quickly. <laughs> Oh nice, full auto mod. I'm gonna put that on the M16 here. That'll give it a 10% faster fire rate and it'll switch it to an automatic fire mode and give me that extra damage. It's very nice. I've got all the cobblestone I need, but I'm gonna definitely gather a little bit extra because it never hurts. And then I think I'm gonna go and get that axe and we'll go gather some wood. We should have everything we need to set up a basic horde base that can easily take on a day 7 horde, even on insane difficulty. Here we go, we got that level 3 fire axe, which I'll switch out for my stone one, and we'll put the ergonomic grip on there, and I'll just dump this extra stuff away for now, we'll sort it out later. So what I need for this horde base is some wood, some cobblestone, and some regular iron, and everything else is kind of optional. Um, or not even optional, I'd say unnecessary. And that's kind of an unnecessary amount of iron as well. What we really need to do right now is just gather up a little bit more wood. It's the main thing that's going to be holding us back, and it's the thing that's going to slow us down while building up. Now, I'm perfectly happy to build the horde base during the night, but I'd really prefer not to have to mine any of the materials at night because that attracts zombies. So let's get this done while there's still daylight. Okay, we have 2,000 wood, but I think I'm actually going to want to kill that to craft another 200 frames, and then we'll gather a few hundred more wood. Hello there. Let me remind myself that there is some nitrate here. That will come in handy later. Okay, we're looking pretty good for a basic horde night kit here. We got 2000 cobblestone and 2000 wood and 200 frames. That should be more than enough to get what I need. Now I should also account for about 10 wooden hatches and then 10 iron hatches. Now you don't have to go 
from wood to iron, you can just place the iron ones, but I have a tendency to place the iron ones wrongly, so I like to place the wood ones instead. I don't know what it is, there's something much more user friendly about the wooden frames, uh, the wooden hatches, sorry. So we're going to want to face the front of the horde base towards where probably most of the zombies are going to spawn, which is going to be in this direction here. And I don't get very scientific about this, I kind of just go with the flow. I think I want like a 15 by 1 trench here. Now, I'm going to take a couple of mods off of some things here because that is 4 hits and this is 3, right? I want to die. Seriously? <laughs> Four hits by one point. Okay. Just because of how much that is going to annoy me, I'm going to take another rank of Miner 69er. And we'll get more skill points building this base anyway, so it'll be fine. Okay, so I have a 15 by 1 by 1 trench here, and I'm going to fill this up with wooden frames as a starting point. And then I'm going to start this all off by turning this all into cobblestone as a good foundation. Okay, we have the basic foundation set in here. I'm going to build this up like four high now. Okay, so we got the frame set up for a very basic shape here. I'm going to reinforce this all into cobblestone and then I'll be right back. That is a very easy way to use all of your ammo. <laughs> okay, that's one skill point already and we're like 25% of the way there on building this, that's good to know. Okay, so we have the basic walkway set up with cobblestone. I'm going to now work on the stairs. They're going to help the zombies get up here. Okay, so we have our stairs in here. These parts here are going to help the zombies that are going to be coming from this direction sort of automatically run up these steps instead of getting them all caught on the side here and you know it's just a whole thing. So next we're going to want to put in the structural supports for the, I guess you could call it the, the corridor of the base. Now be sure if you're copying this base design you're going to want to move this one back and you're going to want to reinforce these parts before you move on at all. It's absolutely vital that this part I'm putting in here is as strong or stronger than the parts you're going to put on top of it, otherwise disaster can strike. Never mind, they're not the most reliable. Okay, with the, what would I call this, the support parts in, we're ready to start turning this into a actual corridor base. We've used about half of all the resources I brought, which is not a terrible place to be at this stage in the build. So next up, we're going to want to build three high walls along all of this. Except at the front, you're going to want to make it extra tall because you don't want the zombies running over the top of your horde base because that's mildly inconvenient. 
No, we have a visitor. And since I'm a little bit cautious of zombies coming up here and trying to ruin my day while I'm building it, I'm going to put the first layer of defences up right away. And that just means I can build the rest of this pretty much in peace. Nice, we fit level 14 and we have two more skill points to spend. We're going to put that into strength. With seven strength, we can now get fourth rank of Pummel Pete. We can get the final rank of Sexual Tyrannosaurus. We could get four ranks of Shotguns. We could get all ranks of Pack. I'm kidding, we're not going to do that. Uh, we could get four ranks of Master Chef. I think you could even max heavy armor if you wanted to. Might not be an awful idea for this series, given how much heavy armor really is slowing me down. Uh, improving mobility by 25% would be nice. Uh, on top of that, we can also max out Miner 69er and Mother Load if I so desire. Okay, we have set up the walls of the corridor now. We've got a little bit of supplies left, probably enough to finish this base off, hopefully. Uh, we need to put a layer on here like this. Now, there is a design flaw in this base design. It won't last into the very, very late game because of demolishers and vultures. But that said, it will do for the first few weeks of any world, basically. Um, it doesn't really struggle at all, even on pretty extreme difficulty settings like Insane Nightmare. Even with zombie block damage turned up, this horde base can really just take a pounding. Uh, we're going to want to reinforce this while we have access to it. Alright, you're going to want to leave this bit open at the back just so you have some kind of escape in case this all does go completely wrong. Which it can do, but it is very reliable. Next we're going to go to the shape menu and we're going to grab these wood plates and we're going to want to come to the front and we're going to want to click on the face and then we're going to click advanced rotation and that's going to lock it in place like so, so that I don't have to worry about changing and I don't have to fiddle with constantly rotating it either. So we have a full line of plates here. Now you may be wondering why are you putting plates here? Well basically zombies are two blocks tall. That's not an issue. The problem is, is some zombies are only one block tall. So if you put this up and a zombie is one block tall, like a zombie dog, it can climb over this. With this in the way it will completely block that mechanic and it will essentially see this as a traversable area, but it won't try and climb it through. Now some things will still get shunted through in the tsunami of zombies that are coming towards you, but for the most part you should be fine. I've used this horde base on pretty much every difficulty, on several different builds, on varying levels of game stage, and honestly it does perfectly well. As long as you know how to use it correctly, you should be fine in most scenarios. It's a very, very dependable base design, and it's not too cheesy, but it is kind of cheesy. But it does just save my brain, which is the main issue. See, I could build an, a different type of horde base, but I always just build this one because my brain understands it so fundamentally. Next thing you're going to do is Fill this all in with trapdoors and you're going to want them to line up that way. You can do that by the way by making sure that these three hinges are facing towards where you want the trapdoor to open like that. And then you're going to want to level them all up to iron because anything less is going to be kind of weak.
Now, as you can see there, crawlers will do that because they won't be able to climb over, but crawlers don't even spawn on Horde Knight, so you don't actually have to worry about that. The one you have to worry about is the spider zombie, but the thing about spider zombies and also zombie dogs is their heads will come through and you can just pop them like that as their head comes through the trapdoor, so you'll be completely fine in that regard as long as you keep your cool and remember to repair the trapdoors. And that's pretty much the horde base. That's all you really have to do. Now, later in the game, you're going to want to reinforce that because this is a very, very fragile point here. But the Day 7 horde is not going to stand a chance against this. Um, if you're going to be upgrading it in future, you're going to want to thicken this so that it goes all the way down to the bottom. And you're going to want to thicken that roof so that vultures have a much harder time coming through it. Um, as you get to the stage of the game where demolition zombies come in, you're going to want to probably extend this catwalk out and put lots of blockers in the way so that they have to jump and that way you can just light them up as they run towards your corridor there and you can fill it with traps. It's a very, very easy to build off of horde base starter. Think of it as the entrance to your horde base, but you can also add an entrance onto it, or you can, you know, just use this and have it go on for miles. But overall, this is probably the best horde base design for Alpha 19, in terms of efficiency anyway. Of course, you could always do, like, a base that has dozens of turrets and stuff, but if you just want something that you can actually make in a day in the game, if you just go around gathering all the materials, then this is a good design. I believe it is a design from Not A Gamer Gaming. I will link the video where they show how to build this in a bit more detail than I did. Um, I believe it was an older video, but the horror base still checks out. I use it pretty much every time. It has never failed me in combat, although there was that one time it fell apart because I didn't reinforce these bottom parts and that was an interesting moment for a stream to be sure and I still survived that time because it's such an easy base to recreate. So yeah, I'm gonna go deal with this guy really quickly. One thing you might find yourself wanting to do is taking these frames, going on face and locking the rotation again and putting them on here just so that you've got that extra layer of padding for the front of your horde base because the last thing you want is them starting to rip through it and we got another skill point that's three levels from building this base not a bad amount of xp to be getting once you upgrade it to concrete you're going to get even more xp from this okay and the last thing i'm going to do is take these frames and turn them into actual frames again and i'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of a catcher here just so that I can maybe walk out and deal with vultures on the roof because they are going to be the major issue for this base because it doesn't have any roof access. Of course, during Horde Night, you can simply put up a couple of layers of defense, come back here, jump up the back and shoot them and you'll be fine and you'll have plenty of time to come back down and repair these. Assuming you're not dealing with like a day 700 horde, they might rip through these. By that time, you should definitely have these up to vault hatches and you should have some kind of electric fence system set up at that point. Um, This is definitely a very good base base, if that makes sense. What's up guys, this is Prebuilt from the future. I decided to actually cut off the video there because this was originally going to be one of those episodes where I do two days in one episode. But as it turns out in the editing process, I've noticed that episode three here is actually still a reasonably long video. I could push it and put in day six, but I think it would probably come out to 40 minutes. And that's not the length of content I'm looking to put out with these kinds of videos. So I figured let's just put it out as a one day, one episode thing. That way, I don't have to upload anything that's 40 minutes long because I personally don't like to put out videos that are quite that long because I think they're just a little bit time wasty and it completely defeats the purpose of putting two days in one episode if it ends up still being a very long video. So I'm gonna end that video there and I'll catch you guys in episode four where we'll be doing day six and if I can fit it in I'll do day seven as well. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.